I'd like to talk about four common mistakes that people make when they consume lemon water. I've done lots of videos on lemon, limes, lemon water, and the benefits, but I really haven't talked about the mistakes that people make. But the main benefit of lemon juice is what it can do for kidney stones in preventing kidney stones, but the citrates um, interfere with the formation of a kidney stone, okay? And I'm talking about the calcium oxalates. And I've done a video recently on that being related to a deficiency in citrate. And so one way to get more citrates is to consume more lemon juice. Another benefit of lemon water or just lemon juice is for its vitamin C. But just remember, if you have pasteurized uh, lemon juice, um, the heat kills off the vitamin C. Now they probably add some vitamin C in the form of ascorbic acid, which is not the full complex. So if you really wanna get the benefits of vitamin C from lemon juice or limes, just take a lemon or a lime and then just squeeze it in water or blend the whole thing in a blender and you can actually drink that down. And that works really good if you add a little bit of a, like maybe electrolyte powder, which has a little bit of stevia in there. So it makes it a nice drink. Plus you have this spike of electrolytes. But if it's pasteurized, chances are it's not going to have a lot of vitamin C. But one of the common symptoms of vitamin C is bleeding gums. So if you were brushing your teeth and you have this little pink toothbrush, suspect a vitamin C deficiency. Another symptom would be fatigue. Another effect from lemon juice is its antihistamine effect. That's why it's good for allergies. Histamines are those things that your body makes in reaction to an allergy that causes some of the mucus and makes you tired. They're to some degree kind of like a fatigue poison. Another effect a lemon juice has is its antifungal properties. So it's really good for candida, uh, fungus, and bacterial infections as well. And so you can use it with other things as like a natural antibiotic. Another thing that lemon juice will do, it will help uh, prevent the formation of uric acid. So it's good in gout. Some types of gout is called pseudogout, which is really oxalates, right? Going into the big toe, it's not really uric acid. And so citrates are really good to counter the effects of that effect. And then also uh, lemon juice can help increase the absorption of iron as well in the body. All right, so let's just dive right into the mistakes. One is that you don't want to consume this lemon water right before you eat. Why? Because even though citric acid is an acid, when it goes into the body, it gets burned up and it turns into an alkaline substance, okay? So basically we're alkalizing this hydrochloric acid that we don't wanna do, and that's gonna inhibit digestion. So consume your lemon water at least uh, maybe a half hour to an hour before you eat anything. Uh, I consume my uh, lemon juice in the morning when I'm fasting, so there's no possibility of mixing it with the food. Mistake number two is you're just drinking this straight uh, lemon juice, just drinking it right out of the bottle, whatever, as a shot, and you're allowing this very, very strong acid to expose to your teeth, okay? I mean, think about the pH of lemon juice. This is a pH of two to three. That is similar to hydrochloric acid. And so if you were to routinely do that and expose it to your teeth, it could potentially kind of break down some of the enamel on your teeth. So what I do is I dilute this lemon juice with water, and I consume it with a straw, okay? That way it avoids going on my teeth. All right, mistake number three. If you have an ulcer or gastritis, which you'll know real quick because it's gonna burn when you consume it, it would be contraindicated. You don't want to take anything that's acidic if you have this inflamed stomach or an ulcer, okay? So that would be one thing you would want to avoid, but you'll probably very quickly recognize if you have these conditions, because when you consume it, it just, it'll burn your stomach. All right, and last mistake is that if you have alkalosis, right? Um, if you have alkalosis where your blood is just a little excessively alkaline, I mean, it's already alkaline, slightly alkaline, but if it's more alkaline, and that's a condition called alkalosis, and it can aggravate that pH and make it worse. So a lot of the conditions or symptoms that occur when your body is too alkaline will get worse. How do you know if you have alkalosis? Here are some common symptoms. Uh, lightheadedness, uh, numbness and tingling in the extremities like your fingertips or feet, tetany, like a little twitching underneath the left eyelid or it could be anywhere in the body, rapid shallow breathing, okay, like 
kind of a version of hyperventilating. I mean, think about when you hyperventilate, right? You're getting uh, too much oxygen and you're creating a CO2 deficiency. And without that CO2, you can't create the um, acid necessary to help balance the pH. People have this idea that oxygen is the best thing in the world, right? CO2 is a waste product but you need a balance of both, okay? You don't want to just have one or the other. If you have too much oxygen, like even in oxygen therapy, there are pretty major side effects, especially if it's pure oxygen. You can end up with edema, swelling, pulmonary edema. It can be very dangerous because the CO2 is necessary to make the oxygen available to your cells and your tissues. But the point is that when you see someone with um, alkalosis, they're too alkaline, their breathing will be off. And it will almost look like they're hyperventilating. And then the last symptom for alkalosis would be like heart palpitations, that type of thing. Now, I've done another video on lemon juice that gets millions of views, okay? If you haven't checked that one out, I put it up right here.